ASAP for short. Um, we're really, really excited to be here at the Kennedy Center. Um, we are a nonprofit that offers free arts and comedy classes to the military community. And that includes veterans, service members, uh, military family members, spouses, and caregivers. So if you identify as one of those people, you can sign up for our free arts and comedy classes. What's really great, what you're going to see today, um, you're going to see many of our stand-up comics and storytellers that started with ASAP and are now professionals, many producing their own shows. Um, quickly, I just want to say again, thank you so much for the, to the Kennedy Center for having us, especially the social impact team, um, and many thanks to Boeing for facilitating this partnership. Okay, I'm ready to introduce your incredible host for the evening. Um, he is a Navy veteran and 2023 Washington, D.C. Arts and Humanities Fellow. He has performed at the D.C. Improv, Gotham Comedy Club in New York City, and is one of our amazing ASAP instructors. Please welcome to the stage, Clyde Thompson. Welcome to D.C. What's up, Kennedy Center? Woo! Yes, yes, it is a great day. Uh, I'm so excited to be here. Um, I will say a little bit about me. Uh, growing up, I had what was called a familiar face. Like, I was that guy who always, like, people would see you and be like, uh, are you related to so-and-so? I was like, I don't know them. It's just, <laughs> I had a great idea, though, during the pandemic, I decided uh, I'm gonna grow this little forest on my face, you see. It's, it's really just a kit, it's a Chia Pet beard, <laughs> right? But I didn't, I, I didn't think like far enough in advance because there's really two people in the mainstream like culture that have very similar beards, uh, Rick Ross and James Harden. So every day I confront the world and they'll either be thinking, oh, he's a fat rapper or an NBA star. <laughs> And I'm okay with the NBA star, right? Like, if, if you see me and I'm like, hey, James Harden, I'm like, oh, I must be looking fit today. <laughs> but when people are like, hey, Rick Ross, I just start running to like the nearest salad place. I'm like, I gotta get these pounds off. I'm not stopping at the wing stop. <laughs> you know, but uh, one guy, it was, so one time I did have somebody see me and was like, Duck Dynasty. Which I didn't like that, right? <laughs> like, I was a little depressed, because I was like, uh, I get that these are like very wealthy dudes, but they look like very poor dudes. And I'm not rich enough to look poor. <laughs> like, there's a, cer there's a certain level of wealth where you could just look poor. I'm not there yet. It'll be a while. Uh, so I kind of hate people when they do that. Uh, but you know, when, I, when I'm confronted with things like that, that kind of really upset me. I always think about the man in the sky, you know, the one being who knows all, uh, all your needs, all your wants, can get them to you in two days, Jeff Bezos. Um, <laughs> my motto, WWJD, what would Jeff do? <laughs> cause like Jeff Bezos has been getting a bad rap lately and I don't like it cause uh, he's doing the work y'all. Like I, I root for Jeff Bezos, right? Like this guy saved me no less than $200 on books in college. So he has a fan in me. Like, single-handedly doing the equity work. Like, he has made the richest woman in the world just by divorce, <laughs> right? Like, Mackenzie Bezos is dumb rich, y'all. Like, all, her whole, like, life is just vacation. Like, if she was to get married again, she would make the eighth richest man or third richest woman in the world, because, you know, gender pay gap. Like, <laughs> this woman is so rich, I saw one time that she had given away like a hundred million dollars and her net worth increased by like three hundred million dollars. <laughs> like that was one percent of her net worth that she just gave away and then got three percent back. If I give away one percent of my net worth, I am now worth nine hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> like it does, the math ain't math. I'm a lawyer and I'm like somehow this is illegal, man. I don't know, I haven't read the regulations, but it's in there. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get to the bottom of this, Mackenzie. The real reason, the real reason I really, I really root uh, for Jeff Bezos is, um, if you couldn't tell, I'm black. Uh, I'm from DC. Um, but I love, I love that Jeff Bezos has made, managed to like make white people experience gentrification. 
like, I have a friend who, like, he was renting in Crystal City, and the day they announced Amazon HQ2 was coming to the neighborhood, he, like, bought a house the next day. He just, like, rushed and bought a house, and I was like, this seems very quick. Was this a good idea? He was like, I had to. The, the prices were going up. All these outsiders are coming into the community. They're changing everything. Parking's terrible. They built a park, and we wanted that space on the water, and I was like, huh, okay. First time? <laughs> And he's like, no, 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 it's, it's, just, it's not like that. It's just, you know, I don't like what's happening. I was like, eh, I've been there, bro. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm from Southeast, and like, where I grew up, uh, our claim to fame when I was a kid was that we had uh, the highest grossing McDonald's in the world. Um, it was located at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue Southeast. Uh, so a lot of times the tourists would get confused. But I mean, once you're there, you know, you might as well just get some nuggets, I guess. <laughs> and <laughs> also, fun fact, another statistic about where I'm from, uh, we had the world record for most people who got robbed after leaving McDonald's. It was a block, <laughs> a block away. It was rough. I mean, I grew up in D.C. in the 90s, so it was kind of wild, but uh, I decided to make, you know, a safe uh, career choice and join the Navy. So when the military is safer than your block, like, those y'all ready for a good show, man? I appreciate this. Uh, I'm going to bring out my notes because I don't want to mess up anybody's intros. Uh, your first storyteller is a filmmaker, writer, and was combat camera in the Army uh, and a news photojournalist in the private sector. He will always tell you that storytelling saved his life. Welcome to the stage, Rodney Rinson Jr. <laughs> So, this one time in boot camp, the army made me cry. And I mean boo-hoo, Niagara Falls type of tears, right? And I see some of you looking at me like, yeah, he looks like he could cry a lot. And I'm like, Watch it, you mug faces. But I am a light-skinned brother who still drinks hot chocolate, so I'll split the difference with you. Anyway. Fort Jackson, South Carolina, largest army uh, recruit base recruits go there when they join the Army, and I'm a few weeks into this basic training part where the drill sergeants yelling at you is no longer making an impact, you're not scared of them anymore, so they're trying different ways to play these mind games on you. And they're seeing like, who can they brainwash? For example, hey there, Private Snuffy, quit standing there and get moving. You're stealing oxygen from the US Army. Let's go. And they're looking around to see who's bought into that. Like some of the recruits, yeah, Private Snuffy, get moving. Uncle Sam can't pay for that. Let's go. And on this day, we're going to do an exercise where we're going to see if we can follow instructions, pay attention to details, and see if your equipment works. This is the tear gas chamber. <laughs> we walk into the woods. There's a single building with bleachers. and. They're gonna tell us instructions piece by piece on each section. So they grab a small group of us and they take us down to the building. And a few of them go first and I'm just waiting my turn. And in the distance, I hear yelling coming from the building but I'm not paying attention or not worried about it at all. So it's our group's turn to go up and we march down and we have our gas mask on the side and they say, when you go inside, there's another drill sergeant there gonna give you further instructions. Make sure you pay attention gas mask on. We put our gas mask on, we march inside, we line up on the wall, we face the center of the room, and in the center of the room is this wooden table with a silver can, and standing over that can is this person in a silver space age hazmat suit, and I'm just like looking focus on that. But the drill sergeant on the gas mask has given us instructions. Listen up, privates. When I come by you and stand in front of you, I'm gonna point to you. You're gonna close your eyes, lift your mask, say your name, social security number, and your unit. And I hear what he's saying, but I'm not paying attention. Because I'm looking at that silver can, and the person's stirring it, and there's this yellow smoke coming from it, and I'm like, yo, that's cool. I got next, let's go do that. The drill sergeant says it one more time. I still was not paying attention. And so I'm in the middle of the group, the drill sergeant is coming by one by one, and you hear people doing that. 
He gets right in front of me, and I look at the drill sergeant in his eye through my gas mask, and I lift up the gas mask, and I look at him. Drill sergeant! Private Ripson! Social security number! Alpha Apaches! Who? Make them think you're brainwashed, right? Put my mask on, he goes along, and we cannot leave until everyone has gone through and done those set of instructions. Meanwhile, the first group of people who've done it are starting to get agitated because tear gas has gotten to them. And now they're yelling at everyone who has not gone through the line yet. Hurry up, just say anything, go, let's move, please. It didn't get to me until my eyes start to itch. Then my eyes start burning and I can't scratch it because I have a gas mask on and I see that that yellow trail of smoke is tear gas. And now we're starting to push each other and I'm holding it in. My eyes are closed, my body's locked up, my butt cheeks are locked up and I refuse to let a tear come out of my face. It may come out somewhere else, but you're not gonna get a tear from me. I'm gonna win this round. It felt like forever. Hurry up, let's go. Finally, everyone's gone through, they open the door and we go outside and they tell us, take your gas mask off, hold your arms up, open your eyes, let the air pass through. And when I open my eyes, there's a wall of water and I cannot see a thing. And I start to freak out. Oh my God, I'm blind! <laughs> the army blinded me! I can't see! I gotta go home! I gotta live with my mama! I gotta eat meatloaf four times a week! I hate the army! <laughs> wind blows, my tears go away, my vision comes back, and I try to play it off. Ah! <laughs> there was a photographer just on the outside of that exit, snapping photos of individuals who were coming out with drool and snot all over their face. Luckily, they didn't get me, so I don't think. After all this, they decided that they wanted to take a group photo. And in this group photo, my fellow recruits got this chiseled chin, war face, looking like they want to go back into the tear gas chamber for seconds. But I know better, just moments ago, they were crying louder than me. So they're making that face, and when you look to the right side of the photo, there's me with no military bearing whatsoever. <laughs> I got my hat up to the side, I'm looking off camera, and I got my eyes open, my mouth open, like I'm eating like the best invisible set of tacos you could think of in <laughs> Richland County. Or, I'm suffering from nerve agent poisoning, that's what I would say, but if you ask the Army, what would they say? Taco Tuesday, right? So, <laughs> so if you ever needed a good cry, whether you like it or not, I suggest you join the Army, but you just might have to give them one round or two, let them win the battle. Thank you, ASAP. Thank you, Kennedy Center. Rest in peace, Monica Walden. Rest in peace, Pete Warner. Take care. I will say uh, tear gas day was my favorite day because I have like 15 allergies. I walked out the chamber and I was like, this is what regular people smell? <laughs> Look, uh, we're going to keep this uh, party going. Our next storyteller is a US Army veteran, uh, proud military retiree spouse. She's also one of ASAP's storytelling instructors. When we asked Maureen to describe herself in two words, her reply was, doesn't follow directions. <laughs> Give it up for Maureen Elias. I admit, I had penis envy. <laughs> From the time I was a small child through my teenage years, I hated being a girl. It wasn't that I had some sort of identity crisis. I didn't think I was misgendered at birth or anything like that. But when my parents divorced and my dad took my brother and left the four of us girls with my mom, I felt worthless just for being a girl. Stupid vagina. <laughs> So I decide to prove how tough I am and how much I'm worth by playing every sport I can get my hands on. Basketball, volleyball, competitive belly dancing, you name it. <laughs> the problem is you have to actually be good at sports to get respect in sports, which I'm not. <laughs> Miss Parrish, 
Uh, we think your daughter should draw from the softball team. She's taken three balls to the head. We're starting to worry about permanent damage. <laughs> Hi, this is Coach Klein. Yeah, um, could you come get your daughter? We're a little worried. She took a volleyball to the face and we think she may need to see an orthodontist. There's a lot of blood. She's <laughs> fine though. I'm sorry, girls. I know the boys' water polo team gets letterman jackets because they're a team. You're a water polo club. You don't get letterman jackets. Sorry. Oh, rude. <laughs> so I decide to do the most masculine thing I can think of. I sign up to join the U.S. Army. <laughs> yeah. Huh? And not just that, but as a counterintelligence agent. Think James Bond, but with boobs. <laughs> As a private, fresh out of basic training, I am running counter-terrorist operations in Germany. I close more security investigations than any of the offices around me. And yet, my commander hates me. When we announce we're pregnant, my husband gets a pat on the back and add a boy and way to seal the deal on the first try. <laughs> me, I get, what have you just done to your career? You're gonna get an abortion, right? Three years later in Germany, we are sent to the Defense Language Institute in California to learn Korean. Our first day there, my husband and I are assigned to the same woman drill sergeant. Her first words to us, I'm gonna make it my personal mission to make sure you two divorce before you graduate. Wow. Well, who peed in her Cheerios? There are two types of students at the Defense Language Institute. Those that are fresh out of basic training and careers like my husband and I, who have already done at least one term in the military. I walk into class on my first day, and there's three careers. Staff Sergeant Whalen, myself, a corporal, which is a junior, the most junior leader in the military, and a specialist who's a male. On the class roster, it shows that they have selected this male specialist to lead the class instead of me. Staff Sergeant Whalen looks at the roster looks at us and says, no, 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 Corporal Elias is gonna leave this class. But I've been in longer, whines the specialist. I don't care, she outranks you, it's Corporal Elias. But are you freaking questioning my judgment, specialist? That shut him up. The other male careers weren't exactly thrilled that there was a woman there, and I was the only woman career student at DLI. Sergeant Elias, you're weak. You need to drop your privates more often. You're a terrible leader. Sergeant Elias, your knife hand is crap. Huh. Women shouldn't even be leaders in the military. Why is she here? Staff Sergeant Whalen shouts, hey, that woman leader has zero dropouts in her class and her class's test scores are off the charts. You can say something to her once your scores are the same. Well, that shut up the haters. Three months later, Staff Sergeant Whalen pins my sergeant stripes on, and I am thrilled. I have waited for this moment, and I truly feel like for the first time, I'm being treated based off of my rank and not by my gender. Of course, getting promoted means a party in the army, so everyone who's my rank and higher goes out to the bar, and we drank. <laughs> now, I was raised super religious, so my whole life, I've had maybe 10 drinks the whole time, but I'm not about to let that stop me from showing these boys what I can do. So we go in, hey, Star Elias, try this mind eraser. <laughs> I don't need my mind anyway. <laughs> Star Elias, here's an Irish car bomb. I am Irish, bottoms up. <laughs> Star Elias, let's do some shots. That's my kind of weapons training. <laughs> I get cut off, which rarely happens in a military town. And still, they are slipping me drinks under the table. Hey, sir, try this one. I decide this is the perfect time to sing karaoke. <laughs> I'm actually a pretty good singer, and I think this is my one opportunity to really impress these boys. So I wobble up to the stage, and I realize it's a little spinny up there. And I'm not sure I'm gonna make this song. So I call my husband up, babe, 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 mirror, mirror. Mold me up. So he comes up, puts his arm around me, and I whisper in his ear, I drunk whisper, I don't even feel drunk. I don't think alcohol affects me at 
all. If the military finds out, they're going to want to study me. <laughs> I stumble again, and he says, all right, boys, I think it's time for me to take her home. The song kicks on, so I'm ready. I'm going out tonight, I'm feeling all right. Gonna let it all hang out. He's dragging me to the door. <laughs> wait, 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 I gotta pee. And I don't wanna do it in our car. So I go into the bathroom. He's waiting for me when I come out and helps me outside. All the sergeants are out there smoking and joking. And they say, hey, Sergeant Elias, we're gonna go dancing, you wanna come? And I'm like, hey! And at that point, my husband decides to show everyone just how drunk I am and lets me go, and I stumble into the car behind me. <laughs> and they realize you have to be vertical to dance. So he puts me in the car, and they're laughing. Oh, we can't wait to see how hungover you are tomorrow, because I have consumed more alcohol than any human alive. <laughs> we drive home, we pull over, I puke my guts out on the side of the road. My husband's dreams of hot, drunk sex left in that pile of chunks on the side of the road. <laughs> he takes me home, showers me, forces me to drink a bottle of Gatorade, and puts me to bed. In the morning, I wake up. I'm playing with the kids. At 8 in the morning, we hear a knock on the door. Three sergeants are standing there, sunglasses on, heads held low. Oh, God. Sergeant Elias, we're all so hungover. We thought we definitely needed to come and check to see if you were OK. Who, me? I'm right as rain, I've never felt better. From that moment on, I developed this epic reputation for someone who can drink anyone under the table and not have a hangover. I'm finally one of the boys. <laughs> but it turns out, I realize I don't need any of that. That what I bring to the table as a woman, as a mother, and as a leader, I am more than enough, even with my vagina. I uh, don't go to the movies a lot, but female James Bond with boobs, I would, I would be first in line for that. <laughs> Listen up. Uh, so our first comic of the night is a retired U.S. Air Force veteran, owner of Wicked Comedy Entertainment, now producing local comedy shows all over the D.C. area. Please welcome Robert Vinny Lombardi. <laughs> Kennedy Center, what's going on? How about five minutes of self-deprecating jokes? So, like, for example, I retired from the military four years ago. I started stand-up comedy because I wasn't depressed enough. I'm also really glad I didn't have to take these steps on stage. Otherwise, you would have had five minutes of me just doing, oh, breathing, just trying to catch my breath. Just, uh, I've been struggling with weight for the last eight, eight, 19 years. It's been a minute. Weight losses, and I know, I know, you're looking at me, ma'am, I appreciate it, because you said it out loud to everyone that I look, I don't look overweight at all, and I appreciate you saying that to the viewers on the television as well, that they all heard you. But you have a different optic. You're looking at me straight on. Now, if I was to turn to the side, you'd be like, is that Tony Soprano doing jokes? <laughs> I thought he died. Uh, I tell you, I set a goal for myself when I turned 49 last October. I said, I will, when I, by the time I turned 50, I would have lost 50 pounds. That's my goal. And I'm proud to say it's been six months and I only have 73 pounds to go. <laughs> I'm, hey, I'm making things happen for myself. That's how we roll. I mean, you need two things to lose weight. You need to exercise. And you also need to eat better. And I am not doing either. <laughs> and I tried to exercise. I went to the doctor. He said, you have a bulging disc in your back. And I said, well, that makes sense. It's just trying to keep up with the outside. <laughs> he was like, that's not how that works, stupid. And then he was like, let me explain it to this guy in terms I think he would understand. He said, like, if you had a jelly donut, and that was your disc, and you start to compress it, and then honestly, I don't know what else he said, because I was like, I'm going to Dunkin' when this appointment's over. <laughs> I'm going to go get six or 12 of those jelly donuts. I'm going to make my own little spine and show him what a bulging disc is not. That's what I'm going to do. 
I even got an Apple Watch last summer, you know, a smart watch because it has technology, all the fitness features and functions. It tracks you, it tracks your steps, it tracks your heart rate, it tracks how little you have sex. It does amazing things. I have this watch five days, I forget all the apps that are on it. It's just another wristwatch. Fast forward six months, I go to a professional football game. I have to park a mile from the stadium. So I get out of my car, I start walking, and within minutes, my watch starts vibrating, and it's like, it looks like you're doing some type of fitness activity. Shall I record this? Do you understand my watch sensed movement? It has never experienced the entire time it had been on my wrist. And you know, thought, hey, we should get this on tape. Now my watch is just something else I disappoint. Speaking of disappointing people, I've been married 19 years last month. Oh, thank you so much. That is the correct response. She's an amazing woman, real lucky to have me. But, but she is incredible. We've been married 19 years, and you guys handled that much better than the retirement home I told this joke to a few months back. Now, I did interrupt bathroom break at the rec center during trivia night, so they weren't happy with a stand-up comic doing comedy in front of the restrooms. But I said, you know, I've been married 19 years. And a lady just yelled from the back, I've done that three times, sweetheart. <laughs> I said, OK. So they weren't as impressed. So thank you for clapping. Uh, but what, you know, I get this question a lot, too. If you've been married for a minute, you get like, what's the secret to a long, healthy marriage? And I will tell them right from the front, there's nothing healthy about a long marriage, you know? <laughs> But I will tell you that you should think of, you know, like when you've been in a relationship a long time, you think of phrases and things that you probably would never say as a single person. Like, for example, we say things like, yes, dear, or happy wife, happy life, or she doesn't speak English, or she's been in a coma since 2006. These are phrases we use, gentlemen. These are just you, whatever works for you. We used to have cute sayings for each other, though, like back when we started dating. Like, she, my wife's super smart. She's one of the smartest people I know. She graduated college, some come loud. She's really smart. So you know what? I called her a genius. Call her genius, smartest person I know. Her name for me, athletic. That's not the punchline, Clyde. It's athletic. And you know what? To this day, I still call her genius. I haven't heard athletic since 2008. All right, my name's Vinny Lombardi. You guys are an awesome audience. Thank you so much. Follow me, VinnyLombardi.com. I didn't hear a thing he said after Jelly Donut. I don't know if America runs on Duncan, but like America's Armed Forces run for Duncan, at least. All right, our next comic just returned to the area from the Midwest and was part of the search for America's Funniest Veteran. She's an Army veteran, an ASAP comedy boot camp instructor, was my ASAP comedy boot camp instructor. Please welcome to the stage, Monica Daly. Hi. That was horrible. Hi. Hi. There we go. Hi, I left the military a thousand years ago. Uh, it was evident from a young friend of mine. I said, you know, this is the year I think I'm gonna go to the VA and really put my paperwork in. Uh, the problem being, when I got out, all of my records burned in a fire. <laughs> True story. Her response was, so like right after the Civil War? whippersnapper. Okay. I don't feel that old. I don't feel that far away from the preppy teenager I was to the prepper I've turned into. Uh, and I don't want to get it confused. This isn't an MLM. I'm not talking about doomsday. I'm talking about senior living. <laughs> Every time I move, I'm getting closer. My new apartment has five handholds in the shower. <laughs> right now, they're just for fun. 
but like 10 years, they're totally for safety. <laughs> right about the same time that that wand is only getting used to really treat my sciatica. <laughs> I have downsized so much, I'm just gonna walk into the casket like, oh my God, is this a single room occupancy? It's so nice. <laughs> like, I love it so much. My dad's the reason why I'm so comfortable with death. Uh, he was always really great at telling me three things growing up. Uh, you have to love yourself first. Woo. Yeah. Woo. When you're down, keep punching. <laughs> right, which was also useful in other scenarios. But the biggest one was, Monica Marie, everybody dies. <laughs> Why are you crying? Because <laughs> I'm five, Bill. <laughs> it's a lot to take in, but he's not wrong. He just didn't tell me that there are three ways to do it, right? There's like good death. Good death is like my friend's dog. Jakey got up, took himself for a walk, Stole half a sandwich, got his butt rubbed, took a nap, never woke up. Good, dead. You can argue with me later, but I want a butt rubbing, napping kind of day when I go. Right? Yes. The other way is, oh, damn. That is for the two people in Illinois who were killed by shark attack. In Illinois, <laughs> right? It is some BS if a bull shark takes you out that far away from home. <laughs> you wanna call Fish and Wildlife and be like, Barb, I don't know what to tell you, but sh shark. <laughs> there was no beer involved. We're very confused. And the other way is, well, that was dumb. <laughs> Those are for the people in Kentucky who died from shark attack. <laughs> in Kentucky, at the aquarium. <laughs> nice people. I have some really nice people in my life I love. I knit with a bunch of older women. If you don't have older women in your life, you should get yourself some. Yeah. I love them to pieces, they are great. And right now, a bunch of them are watching on live stream because they figured out technology and are gathered around one TV set flashing back to the Ed Sullivan show. Right? But I, I love them, they're great. They've got no inside voice, they've got no outside voice. They've got one voice that says things like, oh my God, does that baby not have a hat on its head? Don't tell knitters that they can see a baby without a hat on its head. <laughs> then oh, this is all I hear. Um, quick, quick. Amelda, didn't we do baby hats last week? We did baby hats last week. Ginny, look in your bag. I know we have, Monica, I want you to go over there. Give the baby, just hi, give the baby a baby hat. And I'm like, hush. They can hear you. <laughs> Wait until the baptism's over. <laughs> I love them to pieces. When we're in public, people will come out and meet you because we knit in public and the public would like to tell you that they're in public and they can see you. Are you knitting? Is it knitting? Are you knitting? Is it knitting? Are you knitting? Is it knitting? Are you knitting? My girls are super sweet. They're always like, mm-hmm. Hats for the homeless. Baby blankets. I'm always like thong. <laughs> If you use the glow-in-the-dark yarn, you can chase it around for a while before you have to peel it. Uh, but I gotta tell you guys, of all the things I do in public, this is my absolute favorite. Thank you guys so much for coming out tonight. She called her dad Bill. I went through that phase, I called my mom Sydney one time. I was light-skinned before that day. <laughs> this is just a permanent bruise. Uh, our next comic is a Marine spouse and a mother of five boys. Ooh. She's the comedy all over the East Coast, is the first female comic to win McGooby's new comedian of the year in 2021. 
Although she loves her children, her recent goal is to be able to use the bathroom alone before the age of 50. <laughs> Welcome to the stage, Nikki Knowles. How y'all doing? I will not be here long because my kids think I'm out getting juice, so. <laughs> Listen, I need these comedy shows as breaks. Uh, like you said, I have five kids. I love them. I won't be around them all the time. I'm just trying to co convince them that my name is not bruh. <laughs> like, for real. There are days, I mean, I feel like I am a good mom, but there are days I'm like, am I a good mom? Like, am I? Like, my son, I have a 10 year old son, and he doesn't know how to ride a bike. And everybody's like, why doesn't he know how to ride a bike? He's 10 years old. And I'm like, listen, the other ones were stealing bikes at 10, so I think I'm old, you know, <laughs> it's evening out. Like you said, I have five boys. I have not used the bathroom by myself since 1996. <laughs> I miss it. Um, the thing about having kids is people always ask you cra crazy questions like, what do you do with all those kids? And I'm like, listen, silence is golden, right? Duct tape is gray. <laughs> and did you know you can use chloroform <laughs> as an essential oil? <clears throat> But you didn't, you didn't hear that from me. I found that on TikTok. <laughs> and so my, my five, my 10 year old, he was you know, losing teeth and I'm just like, why does he keep losing two teeth at 10? So my husband was like, the first tooth he lost, my husband gave him $5 and I thought that was kind of rich seeing as eggs are $35 a dozen. <laughs> so I was like, all right, fine. Second week, he lost another tooth. My husband gave him another $5. Okay. But by the third week, I'm like, listen, are you brushing? Like, seriously. <laughs> are you doing anything in your mouth? <laughs> and so the fourth week, he lost another tooth. And he came to me and was like, Mom, I lost another tooth. And I was like, I'm taking you to the doctor because something is not right. And so he was just like, well, you owe me $5 from last week because the tooth fairy didn't come last week. And I was like, hey, you know, I'm not new to this. I'm not playing with this boy. I'm playing these reindeer games with these boys. So I said, listen, you didn't get $5 last week because the tooth fairy died. <laughs> she died in a car accident with Santa, so. <laughs> you figure that out. I don't feel bad telling him that either because I really just believe, you know, he was yanking his teeth out. Uh, he speaks fluid Pokemon. <laughs> there are times I hear him in his room just, you know, with all the anime and I don't have my glasses on a lot and I can't figure out, I'm like, just slow down, be still. Um, but yeah, but five kids, I got another question, but like, did you try for a girl? I didn't try for three of the five that I had. <laughs> And it's not like I don't like my kids. I do, I love them. But I figure sometimes after talking to them, if they weren't my kids, I wouldn't want my kids to be friends with my kids. <laughs> Does that make sense? Because they're, okay, the oldest is 25, uh, 19, 18, 16, and 10. I don't even know where he came from. I didn't even like his father 10 years ago. Like, what are you doing here? At dinner time, I don't even cook food anymore. Because they always order in DoorDash. And I'm like, for us to order DoorDash, I got to take out a loan. So <laughs> now I just buy snacks and throw it on the counter. <laughs> Maybe I am a bad mom. I don't know. <laughs> so now they're, you know, they're getting to the age where they want to talk to me more. And I'm like, I don't really want you to. <laughs> My son got into Hampton. And um, I was happy about that. Don't clap unless you want to pay for it. Um, <laughs> that ain't a joke. But uh, we went to the interview. He wanted, we went to an interview at this other school called St. Vincent, was up in the mountain. But I told my son, listen, when we get out in this room, you got to use the king's English, OK? I don't want to hear none of that bra, none of that. When she asks you a question, you answer it, complete sentences, punctuation, all of that, adjective verbs, all of that. So he was like, all right. So she was like, Dylan, what do you do besides play football? 
And so he looked at me and smiled and winked at me because I just know he's going to give a good answer. And he was like, to be honest, I don't even know. <laughs> you ever want to smack somebody in the head with a phone? <laughs> so this room, this college was run by monks. It's in a, it's a mountain that has 120 monks. And so we're walking the campus and looking at the, uh, the campus and the library and the dorms and everything. And I see a monk walking towards us. And you ever have that feeling with your child? My son says, what is that? A ninja? A ninja? I've decided he's staying home with me. Thank you, I'm Nikki Knowles. You guys have a good day. Five kids. My mom had two, they were 10 years apart. I think she forgot. <laughs> uh, your next comic is a Marine Iraq War veteran who has performed comedy at iconic venues such as the DC Improv, Army Navy Club, National Press Club. He recently launched a full-time spray paint art business that's literally the coolest thing I've ever seen. He made me say that. It is pretty cool. <laughs> Welcome to the stage, Joe Gagliardi. Call a Marine. Thank you, brother. Appreciate that. Uh, it's true. I did put that in there to see if you would say it out loud about my paint, spray painting business. So that worked out. Uh, guys, thanks so much for being here. My name is Joe Gagliardi. Uh, and for those of you that are playing at home, I'm the answer to the question, what happens if you get out of the Marines in 2008 and then never exercise ever again? <laughs> uh, I was not a fan of all the running, uh, if I'm being honest. Um, it's tough, though, because I do get signs all over the place from the universe that I'm getting just way too fat at this point. Uh, I had a physical not long ago, and my cholesterol number had a comma in it, so that's not... Uh, <laughs> turns out you can't have a four-digit cholesterol and a heart that works, so <laughs> I'll have to figure something out there. Uh, I am trying, though. I've, uh, I've been on that keto diet for about three weeks now. Anybody knows the keto diet? You basically just eat meat and cheese. I've gained two pounds. I don't really understand how that, <laughs> how that meat and cheese is kind of part of my problem, you know? I feel like maybe I'm just supposed to be fat. Um, but... Uh, it, it is extra tough uh, mentally in the weight loss journey because I've been, I've been married for a long time now. So sadly, the biggest thrill I have left in my life is eating carbs and not telling my wife about it, you know? <laughs> um, I'm a very lucky man. I love my wife to death. I would never, ever cheat on her. Woo! That's my wife. <laughs> uh, but I'll tell you right now, I've done some disgusting things to a Big Mac in the car. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's intense. Um, being in the Marines is pretty cool, and <laughs> you're welcome for my service, you know? <laughs> Uh, I'm not the hero you wanted, I understand. <laughs> um, sadly, I did not join the Marines for the most noble of reasons, though. There are a lot of perks uh, bestowed upon a veteran uh, post-service. Uh, despite the fact that I have an artificial hip in here, I'm crazy, I can't sleep at night, my ears ring all the time, it was without question worth it for the lifetime 10% discount at Home Depot. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I buy a lot of nails. We're gonna, you know? It, uh, it adds up over time. People ask me all the time, they say, Joe, it's pretty cool you're in the Marines. What's that like? What's it really like to be a Marine? The best I can tell you is imagine being out of breath for five years. That's pretty much the, <laughs> the way I could sum it up. To give you an idea, I got out, as I mentioned, in 2008, and I'm still sweating. Uh, so that, uh, I did not see that coming. Uh, the Marine Corps was not the easiest of, uh, of choices for me, though. It turns out I'm not as dumb as I look. I, I went to the University of Notre Dame, which is a great school. Uh, thanks very much. Proud of that. Um, so right before I was about to graduate, I had to make a choice. It was between the Marines or medical school. And it turns out I like getting yelled at, so I don't know, you know, <laughs> that decision kind of made itself. Um, no, I can't lie. It was not, I was not up for, uh, I was not up for, uh, for medical school. And, and to be honest with you, we're all witness to history at this moment because that's the first time a human, be a human being has ever uttered the phrase, it was between the Marines and medical school. You know what I'm saying? That's not really a choice. Uh, that a lot of us have to make. Uh, medical school was definitely not something that was ever gonna be in my future. To give you an idea of how smart uh, I am, uh, I was walking the other day on the sidewalk and a school bus pulled up next to me and stopped and the lights came on, the stop signs came out, kids started getting out. I didn't know what to do, so I just stopped walking. I mean, I don't, I, I don't know what you're supposed to do in that case. I'm a pretty big guy. I mean, I could accidentally run a kid over on foot. You know what I'm saying? It's arguably more dangerous than a Honda Civic. Um, <laughs> I'll leave you all with this. Uh, I, really am, I really am trying to lose weight. Uh, so I started uh, working out recently, 
which is nice. Uh, but something carried over from my time in the Marines that I really never saw coming. Uh, any Marine here will tell you that on a Marine Corps base, they sell all sorts of aggressive themed clothing, right? With slogans on it like, pain is just weakness leaving the body, stuff like that, you know? And so I got a new sweatshirt to work out in, uh, and it says on the back, what doesn't kill you will make you stronger. Except a Marine. A Marine will definitely kill you, you know? <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. Uh, turns out the manager of Planet Fitness, not so much. Uh, I was walking on the treadmill like the athletic specimen that I still am. And uh, so I was walking, if you're curious, I was walking at a three. I don't know what that means. That was the setting on the treadmill. I was walking at a three. Uh, and he comes up behind me and he taps me on the shoulder and he says, sir, your sweatshirt, it's just very threatening. Don't you think? And I stopped and I looked down at, at my giant belly and I was like, dude, are you paying attention? Obviously, I'm not in the Marines anymore, right? I mean, unless you come up and slap the cheeseburger out of my hand, you're not in any danger, you know? And even if you were, all you got to do to get away is walk at a brisk pace. Faster than a three, whatever that is. Guys, my name is Joe Gagliardi. That's my time. Thanks very much. Please bring your host back out here. All right, we're going to keep this going. Your next comic is a veteran and has performed at venues across the country, including DC Improv, the Comedy Chateau, and Vulcan Gas Company in Austin, Texas. Welcome to the stage, Demi Chang. Hello. So uh, Clyde introduced me as Demi, but a lot of people like to call me Mulan. And then a lot of other people like to get offended on my behalf. And they're like, don't call her that, that is racist. But you know, I'm a big fan of Mulan, so I take that as a compliment. I think we actually have a lot in common. Uh, for starters, we are both Chinese. If that were not the case, it would be a little racist, okay? Um, we're both clumsy and socially awkward, and we talk to our pets like they're people. And we both uh, defied our parents, ran away, and joined the military against their wishes, where we got called sir every day. <laughs> but it's been about two years since my transition um, out of the Marine Corps, just to be clear. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's a little naughty, because some of y'all really thought I was going to say Air Force. <laughs> it's not the case. Um, I am a Marine Corps veteran. Um, thank you. So I know a couple of my uh, fellow vets here talked about, you know, getting in shape and that's been a hard part of transitioning because the Marine Corps really values fitness. And for me, that's not a number on a scale. It's like, do you feel healthy? Do you feel strong? Do you feel good? And I got to say, when it comes to strength and endurance, I feel like in two years I went from like stone cold killer to cold stone killer. Yum, 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 yum. <laughs> which that's, that's rough, man. Um, that's been hard. And it, I was doing a workout the other day. I'm trying to like get back in the gym. And it said, perform each exercise until failure. First exercise, triangle push-up. Does anyone want to guess how many triangle push-ups I could do before failure? Zero. Three, zero, that's kind of mean. Three is generous. Um, <laughs> half of one. That's when you go for one and then you just kind of collapse on the floor and question all your life decisions for a while. Uh, which is, that's a bummer because back in the day, I felt like I was the Bubba Gump of push-ups, okay? All day I was like, you got standard push-ups, incline push-ups, decline push-ups, wide arm push-ups, narrow push-ups, reptile push-ups, spider push-ups, Spider-Man push-ups, pike push-ups, medicine ball push-ups, kettlebell push-ups. Handstand push-ups, weighted push-ups, clapping push-ups, staggered push-ups, archer push-ups, the worm. <laughs> but yeah, that part's been hard for the transition. And um, I know Joe mentioned that no one's ever had to choose between the Marine Corps and medical school. Well, my Chinese parents are here and they beg to differ, <laughs> okay? I feel like I am the rude awakening to my parents' American dream. All right, because the measuring stick for my success is what all of my parents' friends are up to, right? So my mom came up to me once and she's like, hey, 
You know, my friend Kid studied infectious disease at a Harvard University. I was like, okay, well, I study infectious laughter in random bars and restaurants <laughs> and the Kennedy Center. <laughs> so now I just lie when she asks what I'm up to. She's like, where are you going? I'm like, I'm out. Well, first of all, if you think about it, jokes are like little booster shots for depression, right? So now I just lie. I'm like, I'm out vaccinating people. <laughs> How about that? But I know what she really wants to know. She wants to know what she's going to tell all her friends when all the aunties and uncles gather around and brag about their kids, right? So she's like, what, what I will tell them that you are doing? You are going out uh, late at night and do weird things. <laughs> what, what you are doing? And I'm like, well, you know, mom, they say laughter is the best medicine. So you can tell those nosy people that I'm a doctor. All right. My name is Demi Chang. Give it up for your host, Clyde Thompson. Oh, man, this has been fun. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're at the point of the last comic of the evening. Uh, he has performed for thousands of people at some of the most desired venues in the US, uh, including Google, Amazon, uh, which I love, and the White House. <laughs> Please welcome our headliner, P.T. Bratton. Hold up. What's up, everybody? <laughs> Woo! This is cool, because I can actually see y'all. Usually at the comedy clubs, we can't see nobody, so we just be like, y'all look good, we lying. We can't see y'all. But y'all do look good. Y'all having a good time? Yeah. Awesome, awesome. I'm happy to be here. I don't know if anybody else is happy. I'm just happy to be outside. I'm just happy. I know we're inside, but I mean outside, like the lockdown, we outside. Like we free. You know what I mean? Like I'm outside. Give us free. I'm happy. I'm happy they gave us our freedom papers. I, don't, I know COVID in the lockdown seems like so long ago for a lot of y'all, but to me, it was like yesterday. It, it was terrible, right? It's, I'm still, I think I got PTSD from it, actually, because it, like, it was like being a POW. Like, we were trapped, and we didn't know when we were going to get released, and I ain't too much like the people I was held with. <laughs> it was like a game of Survivor that they sprung on us, you know what I mean? I didn't know somebody's going to get voted off that island. That's what I'm trying to say. My, my youngest, I was about to pack a bag. Come on, go with me. Daddy, where's your bag? Shut up, get in the car. You know what I mean? Like, you just... <laughs> Stressful, stressful. But no, I'm happy to be outside, happy to be outside doing things again. But I didn't know that things had changed so much, you know. Um, and they didn't tell me things were going to change. I'm upset about it. Like, prices that went up, inflation, you know. This is ridiculous. I don't know if we need to march on Congress. I mean, not like January 6th march on Congress. I mean, like a normal <laughs> protest. Do we need to, what do we need to do about these prices? I mean, it's out of control, right? It's out of control. I was in the Dollar Tree the other day, and um, thank y'all for not judging me. Appreciate that. Uh, I was in the Dollar Tree, and the prices that went up in the Dollar Tree, y'all. Y'all, have y'all seen the prices in the Dollar Tree? Now, I have a problem with this, because on the wall, it clearly says everything is just one dollar. Why is it when I get to the register, it's a dollar twenty-five? I turned into Karen up in that piece. I'm like, I need to speak to your manager. <laughs> I'll wait. <laughs> the manager comes up and says, what seems to be the problem? I'm like, these prices are the problem. What's, you need to do something about this. If you're not going to charge a dollar, change your name. <laughs> well, sir, what should we change our name to? I, I don't know. Store formerly known as? Dollar-ish? I don't know. This is not my job. I mean, you know, <laughs> something like a dollar, dollar and change. <laughs> I would say, I would say, I, I was, I was in my feelings at that point, so I had to leave the Dollar Tree. I went to my favorite record, my save, my second favorite store. Um, Y'all know what it is, Dollar General. <laughs> dollar General. Uh, <laughs> Some of y'all don't know how the dollar stores work. That, you know, at the Dollar General, things are generally a dollar. Yes, yes, there you go. Uh, family dollar, that's where you make your dollar stretch, you know, family. Okay, some of y'all still not laughing. Y'all go to five below. Five. 
bougie crowd that go to Five Below, okay. I'm so tired of y'all looking down on us because we go to the other dollar store. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm happy to be outside. I am happy to be outside, but it's, it's, whew, it's, it's a lot to deal with. It's a lot to contend with being outside, you know what I mean? Like, I like, I actually miss Zoom sometimes, you know, because on Zoom, you, you don't have to show up all the way. You just show up from the, you know, the waist up, you know what I mean? Like, some of y'all remember, y'all, some of y'all still working from home, and y'all know what I'm talking about, y'all. Y'all don't get out the bed. Y'all zoom in to work from the bed. That's why your camera don't be on. I got you, I know, I know. They be like, hey, Karen. You be like, <clears throat> you gotta get your voice straight, because when you're laying down, you know, Thank y'all for laughing, I appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> laughter is good medicine, it is good medicine. Not the best medicine, medicine is the best medicine. Hello, <laughs> keep it 100. When's the last time you was in pain? You like, skip the hospital, take me to the comedy club. Ain't nobody doing that, ain't nobody. <laughs> I ain't doing that. <laughs> no, but I, I really, I feel like we bonded over the last few minutes, so I'm gonna go ahead and share something with you. Please don't run, tell this. Uh, my real name is not PT. It's, it's not PT. Uh, don't tell it again, because I got warrants. I don't, um, I don't need that kind of smoke. My real name is Tyrone. Um, thank y'all for not laughing or judging me. I appreciate that, too. Uh, Tyrone is an interesting name. Uh, and I had to stop going by Tyrone. I know some of y'all are shocked that I'm even Tyrone. I know, I get it, because I'm wearing glasses. You're like, you know, when's the last time you seen a thug with glasses? You know, it just doesn't really. <laughs> Come on, I mean, you know, you, I can't fight with you with glasses on. You knock my glasses off now, I'm Velma from Scooby-Doo. You know what I mean? If, <laughs> can somebody help me find my glasses? <laughs> yeah, it's not gonna happen. It's, it's not. So I had to stop going by Tyrone for a few reasons. Uh, reason number one, every criminal crackhead you see on TV. <laughs> His name Tyrone, thanks Dave Chappelle. Uh, <laughs> Reason number two, it's hard to get a job with a name like Tyrone. See, reason number one, you know what I mean? Like, how many people work in HR out there? You know what? I'm gonna say what you're thinking, but you can't say. Um, Tyrone on a resume says some stuff that you really don't want it to say. Tyrone says he's gonna show up late. He's gonna take an extra long lunch and ask to leave early. That's what Tyrone on the resume say. Now, I've done all those things, but I don't think you should prejudge me based off of my <laughs> Name, that's what I'm trying to say. I met a white Tyrone one time. I said, man, it would suck to be you. <laughs> you got to attach a picture of your resume. I'm just saying, like, you, you wonder you're going to get that job. You are not. Uh, <laughs> no, so then I went with this pseudo name, uh, PT, because I thought it was, it was a better way to go, but I didn't really think it through, because PT in the military stands for what? Physical training, which is, we all know as veterans, code for running. I don't like running. I don't think, I think running is stupid. There's only two times you need to run in life. When I'm chasing somebody, or somebody's chasing me. <laughs> Side note, that's why I don't watch horror movies. Don't watch them, don't watch them, can't watch them, they're not realistic. Why is it that in the horror movies, the person that look like they running for fun every day, they're the ones that fall down when the killer get behind them? What in the world? You've been rehearsing your whole life for this. This is your time. <laughs> You know it's about to happen. You heard the music change. <laughs> it's time to run, you know what I'm saying? I might not run for fun, but I run for a reason, you know what I mean? Like, and then when they, when they fall down in the movie, this is the part that really gets me, they fall down and they can't get up. You become a life alert commercial in the middle of a horror movie. What is wrong with you? That's why all my friends are fat. I may not be first, but I'm sure not gonna be last. I am, y'all, see, y'all judging me again. You judging me, it's okay, because I'm gonna be that Tyrone on the news saying, see what had happened was. <laughs> they were like, hey, sir, was anyone else with you? Yeah, Karen was with me, but she was asking questions. I don't think she made it. I don't think, I don't think Karen made it. <laughs> no offense to any Karens in there, I'm just saying. We all, we all know Karen that just, you know, you insert yourself in the situation. Uh, you don't really need to be in. Karen, you heard the music. What are we going to look for? You don't have a gun. This person might have a gun, a chainsaw, a knife, a butcher, you know what I mean? All kind of, why are we going to look for that? Did you hear that? Yes, I did, that's why I'm running. What's wrong with you? <laughs> okay, I'm uh, sorry. <laughs> Get real emotional about that. Uh, <laughs> so running is stupid, that's my point. That's why I wanna, <laughs> 
I'm gonna put a pin right there, running is stupid. Uh, and I know the military did a whole lot of running. I know you're looking at me like, hey, you were in the Air Force. They didn't run, we did run, we did run. We ran to the bike and then we, yeah. <laughs> that's what we did, that's what we did. I, I'm, I really wanna express the, my, my feelings about the animosity that's, that's aimed toward the Air Force, Demi. Um, that <laughs> everyone's taking shots at the Air Force, but it's really jealousy, you know what I mean? We took the same test. We took the same test. All you had to do was aim high. That's all you had to do. <laughs> don't all, don't all. You mad because you wanted to be all that you can be. <laughs> Get an edge on life in the army. Now look, I can't, I can't lie to you. That, that, that was a jam, right? I was like, man, I'm about to join. That got a nice little bump to it, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but where they lost me was when they like, we do more before 6 a.m than most people do all day. I don't get up till noon. I'm like, that ain't gonna work, sir. That ain't gonna work, that ain't gonna work. The Marines, I love the Marines, couldn't be a Marine. They got great uniforms. I know that's not how you pick a branch, that's how I did. Um, I was like, y'all got great uniforms, but y'all run toward the sound of danger. I grew up in the hood. When I hear gunshots, I get down. This ain't gonna work. It's not gonna work. You gotta understand who you are, where you are in life, you know what I mean? Then I looked at the Navy, the Navy, man, they really had a lot of uniforms to choose from. You know what I mean? You got your summers, your winters, you got your salt and peppers, your peanut butter and jellies. You got all the different flavors. <laughs> but I couldn't do it because when I realized I was a black man and the Navy is all about big ships with a whole lot of water. I was like, last time a black man got on a big ship with a whole lot of water, it didn't go good for us, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Speaking of that, uh, San Francisco just decided to do reparations. I think that's awesome. Um, I just want to know, do I need to move there now or before they pass it to, I want my reparations, you know what I'm saying? But I want it modernized. Can you mod, I don't want 40 acres in the mule. Don't give me, what am I gonna do with a mule? Don't give me a mule. Give me 40 acres in a Tesla. Give me something I can work with, you know what I'm saying? 40 acres in the. <laughs> Tesla, no, thank y'all for laughing. Thank y'all for coming out, and I hope you enjoyed yourself. My mantra is life is better when you laugh it off. Y'all heard that before? If you haven't, you should go to my website, ptbratton.com. You can find, no, I'm so, if Vinny will promote, promote himself, I'm gonna promote mine too. Look, no, laugh it off, laugh it off. That's why I believe, that's how I get through life. That's my mantra. And let me tell you a story so you can remember uh, what I'm talking about. My roof started leaking about a week ago. Very stressful. Who's gonna fix it? Is the HOA gonna cover it? Then I remember my mother-in-law stays in that room, so I just laughed it off. See how that works? Just, <laughs> just laugh it off. Y'all been great. My name's P.T. Bratton. Thanks for laughing at a brother. Hey, we appreciate y'all coming out uh, tonight. We really appreciate the support. Uh, if you are a veteran, military, military caregiver, military family, please make sure to check out ASAPASAP.org. All the performers you saw here tonight have been through their training. Uh, and we'd love to have you as part of our family. We want to thank Kennedy Center for allowing us in this space. Thank y'all so much for coming out. God bless and good night. Thank you for joining us at the Millennium Stage. For more information about upcoming performances, please check out our website. And if you would like to meet with the artists, they will meet guests in the back of the house. We hope you enjoy the rest of your evening here at the Kennedy Center. <laughs>